All right, my friends, welcome, welcome back. Thank you for staying with me. You know, with um, YouTube, sometimes you just never know what's going to happen. And I've been having some streaming drama going on, but I'm back and I'm going to be able to share my slides. I hope I didn't speak too soon. <laughs> Yeah, you never know. Okay, good. So I'm going to be able to share my slides with you. But um, before I went away, for those of you that are just joining, I was talking about our training happening on the 18th of May. And I said, you don't want to miss it. And I said, you are going to get all this great material. You're going to get the 20 hours of audio, highly recommended. You're going to get the 535 page book, not available to the general public. You have to be in our course to get it. And I said it's all based entirely on the PMBOK Guide 6th edition. So this is the course you want to be in. All right. Now, in addition to all that stuff I mentioned, don't lose sight of the fact that you are going to have access to our learning management system for six months. Six. That means 24-7, you're going to be able to log on, hit the learning management system, dive into the course and study. Now, one of the problems a lot of people face is they don't have a way of methodically combing through the content. Like what I've got on the screen here, you can see this is a timetable that I've put together for students who are on our learning system to go through the content. And you see how I've broken it out piecemeal, bit by bit see, across the knowledge areas, and I've put some dates, some times, you know, they're on a schedule. If I change this to two, everything else should, in accordance, change with it. But right now, I've got it set to 27 uh, days. So I'm looking at those of you who really want to get this done. I'm looking at you guys spending 27 days, uh, maybe 30 days at worst, to get through all of this content in one pass through, okay? And the content I'm talking about is what I was showing you just now. So when you come aboard the training, um, you're gonna go through the live training, but at the same time, if you wanted to, you can go through every chapter in the PMBOK guide. With these videos, this is where it's a, a lot different from other systems because it is chopped into tiny manageable pieces like this. This is manage project knowledge. Now this is a little bit of a substantial one. It's 17 minutes long, but as you go through, as you take notes, as you do all the things that you should be doing when studying, you're gonna find out that it's a very robust presentation of the material. See, not only do you see details on slides, but you also see your instructor as well, which could be quite encouraging for those folks who learn predominantly by visual aids, by video. It can be very helpful. So that's just one process out of the seven. The other cool thing about it is we go into the CTTCs, the Concepts, Trends, Tailoring, Consideration for Agile, which in a lot of courses, this is not covered. But if you jumped on our system, in addition to all the live training you'll be I'm experiencing, you will have a very, very good breakdown of your favorite book, AKA the sixth edition, okay? So you wanna go to pmsucceed.com, that's the website. When you get to pmsucceed.com, take advantage of the deal. Now, for those of you on our learning management system that have already started going through our training, as I said in previous videos, we are giving you a discount if you are already on our learning management system and you would like to come along for the ride on this course. All right. So with that said, let's take a look at what we have from our friends at headquarters in Pennsylvania. Now let's take a look at the stats of interest statistics of interest. They are statistics of interest every month, and I do my best to share these statistics of interest with you guys, just so you know 
what's happening in PMI space. So how many PMPs do you think they are in the world right now? Chat in to me if you have an idea of how many PMPs there are in the world. Anyone know? Anyone got an idea of the number of PMPs in the world? Anyone? Anyone got an idea? How many PMPs are there in the world? That's what I'm about to show you. Adrian, thank you very much for your comment. Your, your plan on taking the exam in the next 30 days. Very, very nice. Hey, join us, Adrian. Sign up for that course. Go to thepmsucceed.com and sign up. It may very well be the icing on the cake, you know, that you need to jail the exam. <laughs> okay, how many PMI members are there in the world? Half a million. Impressive, but not as impressive as the number of PMPs in the world. Going on a milli, 911,375 people have paid $555 to be locked up in a dim lit room, maybe even a dingy room in some instances, like what I've experienced, <laughs> to take this exam. Are we gluttons for punishment? No, it's just that people find value from being PMPs. I found tremendous value. Salary went up 300% the moment I got certified. It's definitely a certification that is worth considering. If you are a project manager, highly advise it. But anyway, it's going on a million people. What about the CAPM? It's also getting up there in numbers, 38,171. I'm also a CAPM. The PGMP, 202,598. The number is slowly moving up. It's, it's been about at 2,000 for eons. I haven't seen that number at 3,000. And it's probably due to the high prices for the exam and what is involved. And also the job market doesn't, let's be honest, it's, it's not very demanding of the PGMP. Some firms are, but in the world of general project management, general program management, no. Some people are even accorded the title of program manager without any certifications. So, you know, portfolio managers are MBAs, many of them. So there's not a very strong demand there um, for PGMPs. And that's why the PMP takes a cake each and every time. Be being a PMP is the boilerplate. And once you've got that, people, people let you do what, whatever you need to do for the most part. PMISP, just crawling up to 2,000. I'm also an SP. Um, PMI RMP, I've also got that one, 5,000. Now you can see people relate a little bit more towards risk than anything else. But when it comes to the ACP, which I also have, you find that that, not, that number is actually increasing a lot quicker than the RMP, obviously because Agile is just all over the place. Not only do you need to be Agile in terms of your project management, the whole agile movement has translated into how you think, how you react in the business world. Are you agile in your thought processes? So people are gravitating a lot more towards agile than the other PMI certifications, uh, leaving out the PMP. And speaking of agile, I just got this ridiculous offer in the well, job. Uh, it's not an offer because I'm not, I can't go for it. But for those of you who are agile coaches, you got an interest in agile, maybe you are in the Arizona, Glendale, Phoenix, Arizona area. Well, let me just get your mouth watering a little bit. I'll show you this job opportunity that came my way. I don't know if you're gonna be qualified, but I'll show it to you nonetheless. But it's a gig for an agile coach. And the numbers, the numbers, 
they are quite attractive, quite attractive. We're talking about well over 50 bucks, 60 bucks, 70 bucks, 80 bucks. If you are a rock star, you could end up getting a Benjamin an hour from this one. So this is the job. It says an agile coach is instrumental in providing coaching and mentoring in support of agile approaches such as Scrum and Kanban practices and frameworks. The role is responsible for coaching and enabling agile behaviors and practices while encouraging agile values and principles. An agile coach will influence all levels of the organization to drive increased agility. That's what I was talking about. You know, all levels of the organization, the whole concept of agility goes beyond project management. So anyway, cool job, great. I posted this on LinkedIn. So if you guys are interested in it, I would say go for it. It's a six month gig, you know, for someone who's more like a hired gun that's come in, do the job, come out, that, that kind of thing. And, and this was a story of my life before. I mean, I would like to jump on one of these way back in time, but I don't do those anymore. So I thought I'd make it available to you guys who may be in the world of agile. It's not a bad one to jump in, make some quick bucks jump out, but it's in Glendale, Arizona. If you want to know more about it, just uh, drop a message in the chat or just send an email to me and I'll give you the content of my buddy who is the recruiter on that one. In fact, the guy who is recruiting for this, he got me a series of six figure jobs way back in the day, like just one after the other revolving door of opportunities. So he's a good guy. If you want me to um, link you up with them, just let me know. All right, so the ACP, that's what made me start talking about this stuff. But well, the Agile Certified Practitioner, not a bad one to go for because it's becoming high in demand. PMI, Portfolio Management Professional, 600. It's not as old as the other ones, but um, again, not that much interest. And this isn't about price. This is definitely not about price. PMI-PBA, 3,000 certification holders, and worldwide, there are 301 PMI chapters with a total chapter membership of, drum roll. <laughs> I don't know why it's truncated, but I'm gonna have to fetch it for you to, to do due diligence and give you those stats. <laughs> so why don't we take a look at what this chapter membership is. I don't know if you guys go for this chapter membership stuff though. It's not, it's not a bad thing to go for, especially if you are new, you know, as a PMP, I would advise that you, you go for these things. But um, total chapter membership is almost half, a little bit over half of the um, overall membership. So there are many interesting things we can infer from this. Uh, we can infer that not everyone who is a PMP is a PMI member, and not everyone that is a PMI member is a chapter member. It's quite an interesting discovery. Um, it just goes to show you that a lot of people are just after the certification and not after the association. So here's the number, it is 298,411. So let me explain what I was going on and on about. I was saying, Chapter membership is this, think about it, all right? The number of certification holders for just a PMP, because there's overlap across many of these, but there are many people who are not PMPs and are other certificate holders. But in totality, let's just put it at 1 million. They are 1 million certificate holders, at least. Let's just put it roughly. Um, and then you take a look at the membership the membership is like half of that, which means a lot of people are not PMI members and they are missing out. In fact, it's like being penny wise pound foolish because if you are a PMI member, your PDUs are maintained quite easily. You know, if you are a member of the PMI, you should be on projectmanagement.com, it's free. You can be on those webinars monthly getting in your PDUs, five, six, 10, 12, every month, if you truly mean business. So it's unfortunate a lot of people are not members, 
but they're certificate holders, right? And then I was also musing at the number of the chapter membership. So a lot of people are members of the PMI, but they're not members of the chapter. And I don't blame them. Maybe they just don't want to spend additional bucks. Um, but if you are going to a lot of these PMI meetings, not only can you get PDUs from your local chapter when you attend, um, but there are many other things that you could be doing, volunteering, getting involved, you know, so just food for thought, food for thought, okay? I'm on the road so much, I'm not at my local chapter in Phoenix. When I am able to go and speak to them at one of the satellite chapters, I do, but um, I'm not able to do that very often. So anyway, food for thought for you guys, you know, get involved in the organization. Go to PMI.org and, you know, know what's going on. Listen to the... Um, videos that our new CEO at PMI puts out. He puts out um, these videos and, and keeps you informed, you know, regarding what is going on with him. And um, I'm actually keen on um, putting out one of the video links that um, he shared. So I am going to post this link. It's called Straight Talk. And I'm, I'm just going to show you what that looks like on the screen here. So that's that. Um, I would advise you guys go listen to it. it, it it's kind of cool. I like the way he breaks down what he's doing. It's called Straight Talk with Sunil. You guys need to go check it out. It's for you PMI, PMI members. All right. So go there, check that out. And while I'm doing that, while I'm posting this link for you, why don't you um, tell me how your studying is coming along and what you've been up to. Here we go, here's the link. Go check out what Sunil is doing. I, I, I like his approach and um, I like what he's doing. You know, he's a, he's an, he seems to be a, a sincere and transparent guy who's just trying to, to make, some, make some change. You know, trying to make some, make some changes to the PMI for the better, you know. So here, here's another screenshot from what he shared. If you take a look, you can see he's just having a, a little banter with his colleagues, with people who are working at the PMI, and they're just sharing what they're doing. I think it's, it gives you, also gives you insight as to um, what is happening in the world of the PMI. It's kind of cool. All right, I saw a chat come in from one of our friends. That is from SB. SB, how you doing? So as far as the um, sixth edition audio is concerned, if you go to this link that I'm posting right here, actually, let me just give you the screen movements. If you go to the praiseion.com site. Um, oh, by the way, hey, that's the one you want to sign up for. So if, if you happen to be visiting the site, that one definitely want to click that one and sign up for the training. Seriously, a lot of you need live training. Don't, don't try to do it all on your own. Um, you need live training. Some of you need to be on the phone with a live instructor for 30, 30 40 hours. Seriously, do it, do it. Um, for the audio, it's right here. It's called the Project Management Audio Digest. Um, so if you click on that, it goes to this link, and I will post this in the chat so that you can grab it, okay? So that's that. Good. <clears throat> and like I said, um, it comes in downloadable format. So I'm showing you the CD case, but you, you can download it like now. If you just sign up and you know grab it from that page, it will be delivered to your inbox immediately, like now, the blink of an eye. And then just start listening to this stuff. Start inhaling it, drinking it. It's funny, a lot of my students say, Phil, I was in the exam and I heard you talking to me. I'm like, no wonder you've been listening to this stuff for like hours on end, driving your poor family members to a state of happiness. <laughs> oh dear, Shri shared with me that um, there was a particular episode here that her family members liked but there's a lot of fun in it. You know, I, 
I don't let training just go by and dull people out. No, I, I want you to be energized and laugh and enjoy it. So um, I've got a, a cast of actors. I've got about 15 actors and actresses here that act out pieces of the Pembok Guide from time to time um, towards the end of every chapter. And Emily, you'll hear Emily's voice here, my co-trainer, who you will see on a slide that I just showed you. That's Emily. And you, you hear Emily's voice um, introducing you to the different processes. And um, you also get some jokes, you know, project management business jokes, just to keep it lively. So you get all that in a few minutes. Sign up and boom, you get it in your, in your, um, in your mailbox, email box. Okay. So my friends, the other piece I wanted to show you um, now, just some ideas, you know, it, it's, it's almost impossible to share every single piece of what I want to share with you because of time and I like doing a good job. So I'm only gonna share one slide with you um, today. And it's really more about earned value management. You know I am very passionate about earned value management. So in cost management, you got plan cost management, creating your, your cost management plan, and then you've got estimate cost, and this is where you get your cost estimates and your BOEs, and then you've got determined budget where your cost baseline is formed, and we do a funding limit reconciliation before we get that, but the real fun starts when you hit control cost. Boom, you're getting all of that fun stuff, your SPI, your CPI, CV, SV, TCPI, ETC, EAC, VAC, BAC, and the miserable EACs that you guys all love. And I've covered that before. But, you know, as my mantra, I like doing this drill with the EACs because you guys love them so much. <laughs> so I want to challenge you. Do you know your EACs? Can you dump the EACs right now. Let's have a quick duel. EACs, let's see who can dump them out the quickest. Go, first formula. Do yours, don't look at what I'm doing. <laughs> Do yours. First formula. And you guys have to explain the formula to me. Just imagine I'm there and explain why it is what it is. And I'm gonna do mine at the end. Second formula. Third formula. Fourth formula. Boom. Did you do it? That's the level you need to be at, peak performance mode, my friends. So I'm gonna use a few um, words to clarify what is what. Typical, where does typical go? If I call this one, two, three, and four, which one should I attach the word typical to? Anyone know? The word typical, where should I attach that word to? Anyone know? Let's see if anyone knows what I'm talking about. Where should I attach the word typical? I don't think there are any takers, Phil. No, no one wants to play your, your miserable little EAC game. <laughs> No one wants to play EACs with me. Okay, so the deal was this. I'm gonna do it again because I mean, it's, it's, it comes so easily after a while. So the EAC, when you have EAC, EAC equals BAC divided by CPI. This is the typical, this is where your variances are typical, right? where you have EAC equals AC plus BAC minus EV, this one is the atypical. 
atypical. You got to know this stuff, all right? I talk about all this EAC stuff throughout the, the training event um, when we hit cost. Cost usually takes at least three hours. So we're, we're not pulling any punches because, you know, word on the street, if you're really tuned into the forums, people think earned value has gone away from the exam. No, it's not. Some poor people end up getting upwards of five, six, seven, eight, nine earned value questions. So you cannot just ignore TCPI and EAC and all that stuff. Don't ignore it. Don't ignore it because it, it, it could come back to, to hound you on the exam. All right, another set of questions for you. Where do the following outputs come from? So I'm gonna go through it again like a, like a brain dump, okay? I'm gonna be quick with it, so if you wanna chat in the answers, that's fine. Cost management plan comes from which process? I'm gonna shorthand it. Cost management plan comes from PCM. All right, you guys tell me where does a cost baseline, cost estimates, I mentioned this in the very beginning. You should, at a minimum, remember what I told you a few minutes ago. Two, three, and four. Where do they come from? Oh, I'm sorry. If you're not able to see it, I'll make it a bit bigger. Let me see if I can make that a little bit bigger for you. All right. So things like this. This is more intermediate level. So if you've been going through the content, after going through your first pass of our learning management system, I expect that you're able to answer these questions. Okay? Any takers? Anyone knows the answers to this? Everyone's trying to be cute. Tell me, cost baseline is an output of what? You guys need to be in my course. Hey, if you cannot answer these questions, you need to be in that course. All right, let me do this very quickly. Cost management plan comes from plan cost management. Cost baseline comes from determined budget. Cost estimates come from estimate cost. Same thing for BOEs, at least within the cost chapter. Project funding requirements these are your funding requirements for the project in total and also periodically come from determined budget and cost forecast comes from CC, control cost. All right. This stuff needs to be at your fingertips. This should be very easy for those of you who are getting ready for the big day a few weeks out. Okay. Earn value analysis. Come back. Earn value analysis. So where are the following tools and techniques used? Earned value analysis, that's an easy one, control cost. FLR, funding limit reconciliation. I talked about that just a few seconds ago. That's determined budget. Analogous parametric bottom up three point, that's from estimate cost. Cost aggregation. Again, determine budget, HIR, determine budget. Financing, where you're gonna get the monies you need. So for those of you wondering, let me see if I've gotten any chat so far. I don't think anyone has been responding to these questions. Oh, we did get one of our friends here. Mutaz, oh, thank you very much for chatting in today, Mutaz. And Abhishek Neil, thank you. I did not see your message before it was retracted. And um, there's no way of me seeing what you chatted in. You might have been right, I don't know. But I'm gonna show you the pages where I'm looking at all of this stuff. I call these pages in the PMBOK guide the figure dash ones. So if you're in chapter seven, Figure 7-1 needs to be your friend, page 232, okay? So page 232 has the high level of all of this stuff I'm talking about, like all of this, 
what is an input, what is an output stuff. It's pretty much all represented on page 232 in your PMBOK guide. All right? So um, HIR, financing, um, cost aggregation, those are determined budget. So if you turn to page 232, you'll see all that. And then TCPI is, of course, in control cost. All right? Any questions? Questions, comments, concerns? The weekend is coming, and you might need a little bit of help aligning your train on the track. So feel free to ask me any questions that you might have. You know the way I roll. I'm, I'm not a death by PowerPoint trainer. You know, I... I actually see myself more as a coach than just trying to train, steamroll the train through all your questions. No, I, I actually want to answer your questions. I don't, I don't just want to show you slides and slides. If you have questions, I would rather answer those than show you uh, slides and slides, even though I, I have an agenda. All right, so here we go. This is the main point that I wanted to talk to you guys about today. It is the CB. If you don't know what the CB is, it's the cost baseline. You need to know the components of your baseline. Now, if you go to the PMBOK guide, this stuff is, is here in a different sort of way, but it is here. Um, where we talk about the budget, and determine budget, page 255. Page 255 has a nice representation of the budget, but I like mine <laughs> because I can quiz you with it. Ha ha, I can quiz you with it. What are the components of the project budget? The answers again, if you look at the book, 255, you probably tell me management reserve, cost baseline, control accounts, contingency reserve, work package cost estimates, activity contingency reserve, and activity cost estimates. But how do they all fit together? So the project budget is the great, 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 great grandfather of the lowest one. But the project budget is the parent of management reserves and cost baseline. So those are the more higher level ones that everything else rolls up into. But then I could ask you, what is your cost baseline made of? And it's okay if you go into your PMBOK guide and you have to look at it. What is your cost baseline made of? And you say, it's made up of the monies that are in control accounts. And I say, okay, what are the monies in control accounts? And I would expect you to say contingency reserves, and work package cost estimates. You see where I'm going with this? So before you step into your exam, you need to know how all of these tie in to the project budget. What about work package cost estimates? These have your activity cost estimates. What a lot of people fail to realize is that work package estimates are not just the tasks. They're also that additional amount activity contingency reserves. So you've got reserves at different levels. If you've noticed, you've got management reserves, you've got contingency reserves that tie directly in there, and you've got the activity contingency reserves. So at the different levels in your project budget, you've got some sort of reserves. This is for unknowns. Now, the way it works, I'm not sure if you guys have studied this, I'm not sure if your trainer has told you, I'll tell you, these management reserves are not stranded on a faraway planet, never to be included in the budget. No, the truth is when these are used, they get funneled into the cost baseline. Because a lot of people say, why do they say budget? And then the two components to it. Well, the truth is your management reserves, when they are used, they need to be converted for the use of the project. They don't just go into a vacuum somewhere. So your management reserves at the point of use 
they're going to be integrated into that because they are going to be used for real work, real stuff. So uh, there's always a question, but why do we call it, why do we call it the budget? And, you know, but anyway, let me, let me read a few things to you here. So if you go to page 254, it says the cost baseline is the approved version of, watch this, the time phased project budget. You've got to remember the time phases. You've got to remember the time phases. Why? Because when we're talking about earned value and we're talking about reporting in earned value, you guys need to remember that the charts you're going to be seeing on the exam, they are based on the time factor. So your budget is really based on a curve that looks like this. By this point, you would have spent X amount of the budget. By there, you'd have spent Y amount. By here, you'd have spent H amount, I amount, until the cumulative flow will add up to the total that you get, where this is cost. And that's how you get to this total. But you don't want to forget the time factor. So at point X in time, we should have spent this amount, that amount. That's why the PMI are always harping on time phase budget. I don't mean it in a bad way, but it is important or you will get a lot of questions wrong, not only here, but in other PMI exams. So by the way, I don't know if you realize they brought out the risk standard announcement on the PMI side. Have you checked out? The cover looks very similar to the uh, PMBOK guide. But anyway, here we go. So if that blue line was your EV line, and the red line is your PV line, and this green line is your AC line. At point X, you should be able to tell me what the state of the project is. See, this is why you need to understand the whole concept of time phasing and then you realize that at different points in time, your SPI, CPI, CV, and SV could all be different, see? But anyway, at point X, at point X, what is the state of the project in terms of schedule and in terms of budget? Are you over budget, under budget, ahead of schedule, behind schedule at point X? Does anyone know? What is the state of the project? Nobody's answering. <laughs> I think everyone's had enough. We've only just gotten started. How could you have had enough? So at point X, the actual cost and the planned value are greater than the earned value. You see what I'm saying at point X? Here, you can see the green line of AC is higher than the red line of, Ace of um, PV, I beg your pardon, PV, red for PV. And you can see that the um, earned value line is right at the bottom which is no good. Anytime your EV line is under your AC, you, you got money issues. Anytime your earned value line is under your planned value line, you've got schedule issues. In this case, we've got both. So these are just a few of the things, my friends, that you need to know, master, understand for your exam from the area of cost. But most importantly, you gotta know how this all ties together, okay? So going back to page 254, it says, at the very bottom, management reserves are added to the cost baseline. You see that? A lot of folks have never looked at that section in the PMBOK guide. If you are one, comment below, tell the truth. Your buddy Phil is helping you unravel this beast. You know? It says management reserves are added 
to the cost baseline to produce the project budget as changes warranting the use of management reserves arise the change control process is used to obtain approval to move the Benjis. You got to move those Benjis into the cost baseline. You see that? I'm talking about $100 bills. For those of you who are not familiar with the song, as changes warranting the use of management reserves arise, the change control process is used to obtain approval to move the applicable management reserve funds into the cost baseline. Your buddy Phil just dropping gold, trying to help you and trying to remind you, look, sign up for the training. Don't tell yourself I don't need it. Don't tell yourself that. Go tell your boss that there's this crazy guy called Phil on YouTube that said I must sign up for his course. Your boss will say, are you under mind control? What, what, what are you talking about? Hey, remember a few weeks ago, I told you, I gave you a challenge. I gave you, hold on, hold on, hold on. For those who do not listen to their buddy Phil, he is going to remind them yet again. A few weeks ago, I, I, I sent out a challenge to you guys to go get yourself one of these, a whiteboard. See, and my challenge to you was for your own good so that you could reproduce, document every day on a whiteboard, page 25, page 25 in the PMBOK guide. So I'm not sure how many of you actually did this. If you haven't done it, get yourself a whiteboard. I want you to do all of those page 25 processes, process groups, knowledge areas, and the mainline data flow. If you've not watched my video called PMBOK Mainline, you need to search for it. And you need to make it a daily practice to dump the mainline. So one of our students, Andre, he came on here. In fact, let me see if I can find Andre's uh, Andre shared an image. I, I was really so impressed. Andre got um, four ATs on the PMP exam. And he said, Phil, when I was in my training and doing this, people were like, huh, what's that? Where did you get that from? And he told them it's, it's from, it's from Prazion. It's, it's called the Pembok mainline. So if, if you have not downloaded the main line um, from, you know, I, I sent out a link in previous videos and I said, sign up for the free course. Have you guys signed up for the free course that I have out there? I, I don't know if you've seen the, the link, but um, I guess I should, I should um, send it to you again. Um, but um, I can't find his uh, photo. I wanted to share it with you. But um, Dre shared a, a picture of the main line. He pretty much drew it all out. It looked, it looked very, very cool. And that's what I want you guys to do daily because feedback has, you know, from, from the streets is that my main line is helping a lot of people. In fact, some people say, Phil, without your main line, I would have been killed in 10 questions. <laughs> That's why I'm telling you, watch the main line video, dump it. Make sure you know it. It's going to help you. I can't find Dre's picture here. But anyway, in the meantime, let me just send you the link so that you can sign up for the training that is free for, it's kind of like for newbies. It's kind of like a newbie PMP training. Oh, I saw some chats. Neil, thank you for sending that in. Uh, Mutaz, thank you. I had not seen that. Thanks for chatting in. Um, how could I use it? Oh, you downloaded it. Good. So you, this is what you need. Hang on. Let me show, let me show you. Let me show you what, um, 
my buddy Dre had did with with the main line. I, I was really so impressed because it's one thing to watch a video and it's another thing to ensure you can you can dump it. In fact, Dre has a number of things I should be sharing with you guys. Maybe I should just I should do it now. So he's got this outrageous mnemonic um, sheet. <laughs> so that's one. Um, yeah, he's got and he's got it in PDF. And he's got a tactical drill sheet. Yeah, I would like to share this with you guys. If you, if you can stick around, you can just stick around for a bit. I will share this stuff with you. Stick around for a few seconds. But in the meantime, do you have any questions about any of the PMP content or the world of the PMI? Because I would love to answer questions you have. So, um, Mutaz, first of all, I'll say when you download a PDF, you got to put it in your wallet, take it around every day, put it in your pocket, whatever, wherever you can put it in that, uh, that you can carry around and, or maybe on your phone, maybe you can just take a snapshot because I shared the PDF with you guys, right? So I expect you carry it around with you and study, study, study it. You know, oh, here we go. So this is Dre's um, image of the main line. So, I mean, this, this wasn't him like getting ready for me to test him. He pretty much just did this for his colleagues in the class. And um, I, was not, um, I was not there when he did this. But this is what this is what he did. Let's let's get the PowerPoint on the screen. Uh, hang tight. Okay, there we go. So this is what this is what practicing the main line looks like. This is what Dre shared, and um, I dare say he did a, a really awesome job. And if you zoom in, so Mutaz, this is what I expect you to do daily. I expect you to be able to draw this out on the whiteboard, the fill approved, <laughs> fill approved whiteboard. I expect you to do that like daily, daily draw it out, daily draw it out. It's going to help you. But if you see what he's doing here, he's showing how deliverables go from direct and manage project work to manage project knowledge, how deliverables go to control quality, how you got, get a verified deliverable that goes to validate scope, how you get an accepted deliverable that goes to close project or phase, how you get the final product service or result transition, how change requests go to PICC from validate scope, how change requests go to PICC from control quality if needed, and he shows how the approval process works. If you get an approved change request, then you go back here. And this also leads in here. And if you get a denied change request, he's also showing that, well, you might have a lessons learned or, you, or something that might go to the issue log. So even though that is not captured in the PMBOK guide, I kind of like how he was a bit innovative to think about what a denied change request, which is not documented in the PMBOK guide, but what does a deny change request really mean? What could it do? You know, so this is from a student who is now a PMP with four ATs. This is how far you need to go. So when I say get yourself a whiteboard and do this stuff, I know what I'm talking about. This, this is the handiwork of a four AT student. See, not in the picture. Those are his classmates. <laughs> But um, that's it, my friends. Do the dump of the main line. It helps you understand the flow, you know. All right, any questions in, uh, in rounding up? I'm going to look for that um, link to the free um, basic training for PMP.
those of you that have not signed up for my free course, you need to. Um, let, me, let me grab the link. Let's hope Google doesn't go berserk or YouTube doesn't go berserk and say, nope, you can't do it. You can't share. Very good point, Neil. Indeed, if you have a denied change request, it will go to the change log. So he got a little bit creative with his lingo there, but indeed you are right, it would go to the change log. Um, and there are other things that it could do, like I said, you know, so he was being, he was being imaginative. And I, I recommend that students be imaginative when trying to figure out things that are beyond the guide, you know. Um, so that's the link um, to my free PMP exam two hour training. So if you haven't signed up for it, sign up because you will get two solid hours of alignment. You know, a lot, a lot of folks starting off on the PMP journey, they need this help, all right? I'm also gonna put it in the comments below. So check the comment below, there's a link. Sign up for that training, um, it's free, and you get two solid hours. And in the passage of time, I am going to make that more robust so that I put some additional details that will help you on your journey to becoming certified. So, you know, even without paying anything, you can be on one of my courses, this one right here, okay? Um, I put a couple of links into the comments and into the chat. So I expect to see you guys on that portal, okay? Let me see you there. Okay. Well, let's see. I think that's pretty much it from me. Are there any questions or concerns? Do you guys know exactly what to do to achieve success? You got to daily, daily, daily make it a habit to grind out this stuff. And like I told you, one of the best ways to do this is be on a system that gives you options, coverage options. Even beyond that, my friends, you need to have a solid timetable, very similar to the timetable I showed you in the beginning. If you have a solid timetable to execute, that is an, another crucial step, okay? So have a solid timetable, and then when you've now got a solid timetable, get on the system. Like I said, you can have six months of access in addition to the training that's happening on the 18th. So you're getting audio of 20 hours. You're getting a book, 535 pages that explains a lot that is not explained in detail in the guides, PMBOK guide. And then you're also getting all of these videos, all of these chapters. Take a, take a look at some of the specialized videos because I have specialized videos for people. Here's the WBS and network diagrams explained in detail. You know, this is not even PowerPoint. This is straight ahead, traditional whiteboard type training. And there are a lot of people that need this. You might need this, you see, before you truly understand a concept. Um, I also have some specialized like this is an optional tutorial here. So if you felt, oh, I need more, there's a, an optional tutorial. And then going down into the lower levels of the stuff, here is conflict management, a tutorial on conflict management, deep dive. I break it apart really, really deep. So there's a lot of, a lot of stuff beyond all the processes in the PMBOK guide. I have a lot of whiteboarded processes here that can really unravel your understanding. Here is other risk parameters. Uh oh, there's you know who. <laughs> Let's not mention his name. <laughs> but um, there's the assessment of other risk parameters. Um, and yeah, I go into all of them. Dormancy, 
urgency, all this stuff that you read about in the PMBOK guide, you need to see it pop and come to life. I don't know if any of the systems you're studying on have anything like this. Here's, here's a tutorial on WPD, WPI, WPR. Nothing but that for 11 minutes, you see? So I advise you, come on the system. Oh, and I didn't tell you, Agile, for those folks who are struggling with Agile, we've got Agile videos. My colleague Tiffany has got a bunch of videos that uh, she has created and they're up here to help you better understand Agile. All right, so that's it. You can see I'm really trying to help you guys sign up for the free course, if you haven't, and sign up for this one. The free course will help people beginner to intermediate, okay? Some of you who are advanced may also need it. You might find value from it as well. It might um, solidify your understanding. You know, ultimately, we get to the end of this course and we've got a miserable mock exam right here. But we also have a ton of lessons learned. You know, many, many, many videos of lessons learned. Lessons learned from different, 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 different students across, you know, different students across the board, you know, who have aced a test and share how they did it, you know, what they studied, how they studied. So there's a treasure chest, my friends. We've got, I want to say we've got at least 60 to 70 hours of content. It will take you that long to be able to comb through this entire LMS. Some people go through the LMS for a year because for them to cover the content, they need up to four or 500 hours, you see. So if you are looking for a solution that is robust, puts it all together, like I said, you might truly just wanna to head to the Prazion site. And when you get to Prazion.com, that link where we have the uh, training starting on May 18th, look at the ridiculous price. Right now, if you were to sign up, you get it for just that. Six months of access, 20 hours of audio, very robust study guide. And I'm telling you, you're gonna be in world-class training. It does not get any better. It doesn't, the whole package. I would like to see a training option that gives you 20 hours of solid audio with entertainment, with scenarios of what's in the PMBOK guide, with a world-class cast of trainers and actors, a robust book that has examples of templates. So in this book, I have examples of templates, PMI, talked about templates, you know, stuff that's not even in the PMBOK guide. For example, I'm looking at a status, I'm looking at a status report. I ain't seen that in the PMBOK guide. I'm looking at an earned value graph. I haven't seen that in the PMBOK guide. I'm seeing examples of a change request form. I ain't seen that in the PMBOK guide. Oh, NPV, IRR, BCR is all in that book. So my friends, Sign up, okay? Do you have any questions before I hop off the call? Go in once. Go in twice. Go in thrice. All right, I might just have to say have a lovely, awesome, enriching weekend where you go into the deep dregs of the PMBOK guide, okay? And remember, I offer one-on-one -on -one coaching, like, you heard from a Zeta the other week, didn't you? Do I need to play a Zeta's lessons learned again for you to relive what she spoke about? Huh? Um, Neil says, how many times do you suggest to read the PMBOK guide before taking the exam? So Neil, let me advise you based on my own experience. I read the PMBOK guide two and a half times and I do not think I could have even gotten half as good if I had not read the PMBOK guide two and a half times. The half came from reading a wrong PMBOK guide. When I took the exam, it was on the second edition, but I was reading the third edition. You know how PMI brings out two PMBOK guides at the same time? Yeah, that throws people off sometimes because 
you got no clue. There's so much documentation. There's the PMP handbook. There's a content outline. There's the PMBOK guide. There's the study guide that you're using. There's so much stuff. So there's a tendency to get confused if you don't have someone hand holding. And while I had my mentor who showed me the tracks, which I, it was foolish of me in hindsight, I should have engaged her more to say, hey, Mary, show me this stuff. What was your exam like? I, I didn't. I don't know what on earth I was thinking. And that's why now I have the one-on-one -on -one sessions where people can have one-on-one -on -one coaching. If you don't want to be in a classroom with many other people and learning in small groups is your style, you might want to do one-on-one. -on -one. But I would advise that you read the PMBOK guide at least twice. I would advise that you read it by knowledge area, I would advise that you read it by process group. And I would also advise that you read little sections of it, like the glossary, the index, look for words you don't know, make sure that you are bulletproof so you can take out the enemy. Pimpy, oh, I shouldn't have said his name. He might hear me. Okay, any further questions or concerns? You know, it's your one-stop shop for answering these questions that just creep up every now and again. No questions? All right, my friends. Well, thank you very much for joining me today. And I hope you have a wonderful weekend. And um, I'm also looking forward to hearing great news of your success, if you truly uh, mean business and getting this done. Um, I will be looking out for some great news, okay? I'm going to hop off my soapbox and I will see you guys very soon. Take care and make the most out of your weekend. Bye for now.